My name's Ron Livingston. I'm playing a, a man named Lewis Nixon. He was the intelligence officer for Easy Company in the Second World War, 506 Parachute Infantry Regiment, and I shot a video diary. Here it is. The whole thing started, I'm down at the production office doing a little bit of research, and uh, Tony Toe comes up to me, he's the producer, and says, Ron, uh, listen, we got people from HBO and they want to do kind of a behind the scenes actor's diary. We'll get you a camera, it's no problem. You just, uh, one thing we want you to do is we would like you to carry it around and shoot as much as you can of, of, the, of what goes on. My first thought was, I, uh, you know, I'm already kind of jumping into uh, actor boot camp, uh, completely unaware. Do I, is, do I really want to be carrying this camera around for the whole thing? Yeah, in the end I said, okay, I figured, why not? I'm annoyed already. Are you gonna miss me? I'm not gonna miss you leaving the milk out. <laughs> As it got closer and closer to the time to go, uh, the list of the people that that uh, I needed to make sure I said goodbye for, you know, before I left for nine months, just got longer and longer. And so we had uh, this kind of last minute farewell party. And Grace Nixon came. Grace is, is Lewis's widow. Incredible woman. I mean, uh, amazing woman. Smart, vibrant, has, has an amazing story of her own. And she helped me a lot as far as just explaining kind of what the guy was about. Oh, that's a good so picture. handsome. <laughs> <laughs> I think handsome. so too. This guy, this guy was handsome. Yeah. This is handsome guy. Oh, well, you I don't just... know. I think I think Lewis might be a little more handsome. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I always like to try and do a lot of research, so I know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, it's pretty easy to start on this one with uh, Stephen Ambrose's books, D-Day about D-Day. Citizen Soldiers about the rest of the war. Field manuals, these are all uh, period field manuals. Rifle Company, haven't gotten to that one yet. Uh, map and photograph reading, uh, Nixon was an S2 uh, intelligence officer, would have been doing a lot of that. Pictures, these I got from the production office. Here's the man himself. I got about six years on him, I think he was 26 at the time of the war. Sometimes you can't really see too much, you just get a sense of maybe, you know, the what they look like, the uh, way they carry themselves, the hair. <laughs> right there, they carry themselves like goddamn men. <laughs> this is my favorite here. This is uh, Winners and Nixon. Devilish rascal, huh? <laughs> There's Winners. Stephen Ambrose has described Dick Winners as being the heart and soul of Easy Company. Dick worked for Lewis when they came home. And they were best friends, really, for, uh, for the rest of their lives. I put off calling Dick Winters for about a month. He's kind of a larger-than-life guy uh, after you, or in, in, in your head he is anyway, after you, you, you read uh, Band of Brothers and, and D-Day and all the Ambrose stuff, kind of hold up in my, in my office and uh, set the camera up and I had this big elaborate plan how I, I you know I have one of these phones that's like a speaker phone and so I was gonna put him on speaker phone and and then I was gonna be able to get the conversation from both sides and I dialed him up and and I said ah hey, hello uh take it in and the phone goes Ooh. Yeah. it'll be as, as uh, tomorrow at 5 30. he's like hello hello Who's the, hello? And I was just one say, and then I couldn't get the damn thing off. Sorry about that. Yeah, we're here. Sorry about that. But I, I did a lot of nodding and saying, uh huh. Uh huh. That was my first conversation with Dick Winters. I guarantee you that I'll give it everything I got. Bye. The first thing they did for us was they set up a 10-day actor boot camp. They train us in the same way that they train military people. It seems that the only difference is if you say screw you in, in real boot camp, they can throw you in jail. Um, if you say screw you in actor boot camp, they can't put you in jail. They just call Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks. <laughs> So I uh, got on the plane to London. 
did a little weapons training on the way over there. We almost had a few casualties in, in customs, uh, including Matthew Settle and Ian Bailey, uh, the guys playing Spears and, and Webster. Uh, didn't have their work permits, so they got they got detained for a while. We're gonna oh, be sent that's back. That's brilliant. Now. That's brilliant. right there. We're gonna be sent back. I don't care about that anymore. I'm just too wrapped up in it. Yes. Oh, he didn't realize he was recording. So it was the first of many times when when somebody tried to take the camera away. They'd given us these Corcoran jump boots that we were gonna wear. They felt like they were made out of uh, of like corrugated tin when we first got them. We knew we were gonna have to run in them on Monday, so one of the guys played played hockey for a while. He said, oh, well, here's what you do. You stick them on your feet, go stick them in a tub full of hot water, and then uh, wear them around that night, and, uh, and if you can, sleep in them. And then by the morning, they'll fit really well. Any anytime a show starts, you know, one of the one of the first things that you do is is kind of everybody everybody's sizing each other up a little bit, you know. It's kind of like, all right, uh, who's this guy? Is he gonna be a good guy? No. <laughs> but this was the first day that everyone was kind of thrown together, and nobody really knew what to think. Ron, Ross, no, 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 no. Ross. And everybody's a little apprehensive about meeting Captain Dale Die. He's basically carved out. Uh, a, a franchise niche as military advisor to the movies. He and his company have been involved in, in pretty much every major war movie that's been made. And there's a lot of, lot of stories floating around. Uh, we knew all the guys in Private Ryan, uh, mutinied and wanted to quit, you know, halfway through. And so everybody seemed to have a different story and everybody seemed to have something different to expect. And the next thing we did is we get sent down to, down to wardrobe. Now you're gonna see an amazing transformation. There's a, a airplane hangar just filled with racks and racks of uniforms. So, vest, shirt, trousers, M42, parachute, jacket. Okay. Your kit bag here, underwear, thermal, poncho. <laughs> That's it. Looking good. Webbing? Webbing, please. Webbing, please. Uh, Livingston playing Nixon. Webbing is, uh, it's that, that you know, G.I. Joe kind of. Uh, a harness, backpack, musette bag, you know, stuff hanging off of you. You get all suited up and it's kind of like, all right, damn, I look like a soldier. Not to a soldier, you don't look like a soldier, but you know, you think you do. <laughs> so, we're standing in the commissary in, in Hatfield, ready to get on the bus, and uh, in come the sergeants. Here on out, we're no longer called by your civilian name. So what you came in as is no longer what you are. We're going to use the name that you're going to have throughout this picture. Nixon! Sir! I, of course, am, am dutifully recording the whole thing for uh, HBO and posterity when Captain. the cadre, the sergeants, who apparently haven't been notified by HBO uh, <laughs> that this is going to happen, uh, see it. The camera used now is going away. Okay. Because it will not last. I know it's okay. And I actually had to put it away for a couple of days, but uh, there's a little gap of about three or four days that uh, no one's ever going to see. When you used to reply to somebody, it's yes. Get used to it. Yes. If you're British, yes. If you're American, yes. Not yeah, yep, yo. What's up, yo, dog? All that stuff's gone. 1940s, right? Start using it. If somebody says, Staff Sergeant Farnsworth becomes a captain, and I see him, I will call you to attention, and I will salute, and you will all stand at attention. And he'll tell us to stand at ease, or stand at attention, chew our ass, and make us do push-ups, all that other fun stuff. I like that you're smiling now. We are so <laughs> fucked. The day generally would start at about six. They'd have us do a five-mile run. Get on lady, walking down the street. Back on her back and boots on her feet. Said, hey, old lady, where you going to? Hey, old lady, where you going to? Said, the U.S. Army Airborne go. I think we worked up to it. I think the first day was maybe four miles. Said, hey, old lady, don't you be so bold. Hey, hey old lady, don't you be so bold. Save that stuff for the young and the bold. Not all of us had really done five-mile runs every day at 6 a.m. for a while, so... 
That that took a little took a little while to get the hang of it. Man, hey, Hey, young punk, don't you be so fool. I'm an instructor at the Airborne School. I'm an instructor at the Airborne School. It was hardcore. Hardcore. Airborne. Airborne. All the way. All the way. Out. 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 Two sergeants take charge. Take them inside. The next formation will be called. Probably be 0830. Carry on. Square your shit away. Get ready for the field and training. Go. Yes, sir. Move it up, move it up, move it up. They had taught us all the, uh, the general orders. For two days, we were obsessed with learning these things. What is the third general order? There's an old military adage uh, that says, shit rolls downhill. And uh, well, I guess that what that means is that uh, this guy yells at this guy, yells at this guy, yells at this guy, yells at this guy. And if this guy screws up, then it's this guy's fault, and this guy's fault, and this guy's fault, and this guy's fault. So Damian Lewis, who was playing Dick Winters, had been made our platoon leader. And so he was in charge at that point of basically bullying everyone into learning their orders. I want everybody to know this shit. If we do not, I am the one who's going to be taken to punishment. But that's, that's pretty much how it came down, because if somebody screwed up, uh, we'd get punished for it. You know, after they've run you around for 14, 15, 16 hours, they get tired and, and they don't want to run you around anymore, so they could just figure, well, we'll put them on guard duty. The schedule was you'd sleep for two hours and then get up and do an hour of guard duty and then sleep for two hours and get up and do an hour of guard duty. And then by then it was pretty much time to get up and go on your five mile run again. So the, I think it's the seventh general order is to talk to no one except in the line of duty. I don't know, I guess I figured at the time it was a time this in the line of duty to see what the hell Lee Gott was doing. Yeah, so he was afraid we were going to be descended upon by, by a cadre of people. Which, you know, i got to say, those guys, they, they did have a way of jumping out of, out, of, uh, out of nowhere when you least expected it to start yelling at you. Private Tipper, was he was a new guy, he was a replacement, he came in. And I was his squad leader, so we got grabbed somebody, showed him how to, how to uh, field strip a an M1 and put it back together. It's his first day. And uh, sure enough, you know, the next day, uh, Staff Sergeant Freddie Joe Farnsworth uh, comes sauntering in and is like, yeah, does he know how to field strip? And we're like, yeah, yeah, we taught him. He knows how to do it. And he did it in the bathroom the night before. My God, he did it in, the kid did it in like a minute and a half. It was amazing. I got 20 bucks on Tipper. Who's taking it? Yeah, I'm there. Oh, he's gonna do it. So. I was all cocky about it. I was like, yeah, watch this kid go. Well, sure enough, Tipper, uh, you know, it's a lot of pressure. I got a video camera on him. He freezes up a little bit, at which point uh, Sergeant Freddy Joe turns to me. I'm the squad leader. Shit rolling downhill. Takes the video camera away from me. Put your hands in a diamond push-up position until he's done with that. Yes, sir. I think he's tired of being videotaped, too, a little bit at this point. He's just a little mad that he told me I couldn't have the camera anymore. <laughs> and I still get to keep it. So he puts me down in the ground in uh, about, about like that, you know, I'm handing about halfway down. You like those hands in the diamonds? I do, sir. It's a nice camera. It is a nice camera. <laughs> I'm gonna take it home with me. <laughs> I'm going to be a camera weenie when I get down with this. I was down there for about two minutes, and, uh, and uh, Frank John Hughes, who's uh, playing Bill Garnier, says, uh, all right, you know, he, he gets down there too. And, and uh, next thing you know, we had uh, both squads, uh, pretty much the whole platoon down there volunteering to, uh, to be down there with me. And, uh, and by God, Tipper got it. Okay, Nixon, you got a couple of 20 bucks to hand out. Airborne all the way. I got news for you. Sweat right now, even if it stops raining now, it is going to be cold tonight. So they want us to be familiar with maps, map and compass. This is kind of a personal thing for me because Lewis Nixon, the guy that I'm playing, that was his job. He was the map guy. He was the guy that kept the map and had to know where the, the enemy was. You know, I'm okay with maps. <laughs> Give me a good Rand McNally and I can, I'll can i have a hell of a vacation, you know? But uh, this is something new to me. Our objective was a dismantled railway. Grant, yeah. where's the objective? 
Objectives right down there, dismantled railway. Well, I didn't really exactly know what a dismantled railway was. <clears throat> Apparently, what a dismantled railway is is a hump in the middle of, of a big field. So we pretty much went right to it, found the thing, walked along it, going, hey, look at this big hump in the middle of this field on the way to our dismantled railway. That blue line there is the yeah. watch out for adder's fence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we took a left turn on that road. We came to this intersection here. Uh -huh. We took a right turn there, came to that big junction there. This, you see these terrain features? Mm -hmm. That's that big ass hill that we had to huff it down. We're going roughly now parallel to where we're supposed to be, but we're not exactly online. Must have gone back and forth over the whole damn camp before we found uh, something else that actually wasn't a dismantled railway, but that looked like it was a dismantled railway. This is Tipper, approaching second team objective, putting it on camera, abandoned railroad track. Right there. See the carriage in the background? Come around to the left hand side. There we are. Bend the railroad track. About fucking time, too. Night Compass March was same, same deal at night. <laughs> uh, our objective on that one was to find a uh, a, a little coffee pot. I don't know. The, I, I, I think the significance of the coffee pot was it was a Vietnam souvenir of Captain Dies. I'm not sure if that was true or not, but uh, I don't know if he'd trust us with his Vietnam souvenir coffee pot. So they they stuck that out in the middle of a field with a, a little, you know, lean to over it. This one was Damien's exercise. Okay. Okay. Listen up. <laughs> what, do you, what, what are we suggesting then that we didn't? We went wrong with the paces around that first tree. The difference with this exercise was, this was the officers. One, two, three, Equatorial. Four, five. We were a bunch of fresh second lieutenants, you know, gold bars, and everybody wants to get to get a spoon in the pot. Nine, four, this road leading up to our right here. We probably put a good half an hour on the thing, like arguing over how, 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 how we should go about it. Uh, no, 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 I no but I mean on the, on the actual physical terrain road, and then we can see what angle no, it's what, what we have been doing. Okay, okay, listen up. I'll tell you what okay. we have been doing. We have been walking in scrub all along here. But in the end, we found the thing. Oh, got something here. Looks like a lean to. That so is the objective. Nixon found the coffee pot here, Nixon. That's oh. your trophy, Nixon. Well, I, I don't think Congratulations. <laughs> well, now, wait a minute. You navigated here. Yeah, I, I really just walked in front of you. Sergeant Lipton went, of course, as the senior non-com. He sort of pretty much hang, hung back uh, and, and let the officers all work it out. But <laughs> I can't think that he had a pretty good opinion of us by the time the night was over. Blind luck is what that was. And your partner, we're going to do sit-ups for two minutes. Whoa, look at that. I don't believe in omens, easy company, but I think I see one. Timed exercise, two minutes, stand by, go! Probably day five, six, something, I'm not sure. Captain Dye brought out these uh, extraordinary exercises that, that, uh, that I, I guess he invented uh, with uh, colorful names like the atomic sit-up, the caterpillar press-up. You will put your right arm over the left arm of the person to your right. Do it now. Right arm over the top, the left arm. Both of these things, they only work if any, everyone's in sync with each other. Mr. Compton says he's going to call the rhythm for you. Listen to Mr. Compton. He'll be the next voice after I say go. Ready? Go! Down! Up! Down! Up! Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And they only work if you're sitting in the right order. If you have a guy that's too big next to a guy that's too small, you can't do it. Down, up, Randall, man, Randall, man, down, up, 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 down,
our whole body should go rigid. And it should go rigid instantly. There must be a snap and surge of power. Hey. <laughs> you have three tries to make it happen. In addition to just being a physical challenge, there's a there's a, a little bit of an organizational thing that goes on. Okay, okay, you gotta get up here and you gotta get up here. If you can do this, if you can do this, it is a new record. You have two more people in the current standing record. Oh, You didn't make it. I think it was kind of a it's a test for the you know the, the leaders as well to, to like go okay and organize this thing and make it work. Just tell us who did not make it. Me. We will switch you to a lighter man. Yes. Who did not make it? Raise your hand. Train. E Company, let's do this thing. Let's do it right. Yes. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on, guys! Down! Last try. Give it all your heart now. Ready? Up! Caterpillar push-up thing is probably not as hard as it looks, and the sit-up thing is a lot harder. <laughs> By midweek, the, the training aspect of what we were doing really started to pick up. A lot of guys had been banged up, a couple of knee injuries. The insurance people were starting to get worried. They were getting word back from the production office saying, hey, you know, you gotta, it's, 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 somebody else gets hurt, we're gonna shut this thing down. Just a shot of everybody's feet. We didn't really want to do that because, you know, today we're learning how to throw grenades and tomorrow we're learning how to clear a house. Neil McDonough playing, playing Buck Compton, uh, big G.I. Yeah, he's G.I. Joe. And somebody catches him with the, with the muzzle of an M1 across the, across the lip. There we go. Does it hurt? Does it hurt? Suckers out of Buck Compton, baby. Uh, at this point, they were kind of worried that this was going to be the straw that broke the camel's back. So uh, they, they drove him about 90 miles out of town and checked him into some local hospital under the name Buck Compton. Thank God for socialized medicine, that's all I can say. You got a bug. Yeah, you got a bug on your face there. Is that a bug? You see what that is? It's it's a two yeah. stitches. Was that's there anesthesia? Yeah. Was there anesthesia with this thing? <laughs> I do not think so. I am Buck yeah. Compton. On a given afternoon, we might do a grenade assault. Somebody grenade that spot! We do uh, isolate and eliminate a sniper. We have snipers to our left hand side! House clearing. And in between these drills, which of course always seem to take place on opposite ends of the camp, we'd be marching over there and marching over here and, and generally in full gear. Hi ho, diddy bop! Wish I was back on the block! I wish I was back on the block! You'd read, oh, the full gear weighs I don't know, 80 pounds. 80 pounds as a third grader saying, give me a piggyback ride all day, <laughs> okay? Not like, all right, okay, the piggyback's right, but all day. A drinking man. Yep, hey, crazy. So they'd have us sing, and for some reason, it really does work. It just makes it go faster, it makes it go easier, everybody gets into rhythm, and there's something happens that clicks over when you lock into rhythm. And I think that's why they do it, because it's just too pleasant to be allowed in the military if it didn't have some ulterior motive, such as making you march farther. I'm gonna teach you a new kind of attack. Dangerous operation. It depends on the skill of your machine gunners. Your machine gunners have got their shit together, you can do this. They do, sir. Captain Guy, he'd have the cadre running around somewhere with uh, with these little submachine guns shooting blanks, and they would just, these guys are good. I mean, that's they're good, that's what they, they do. So you can't catch them, you can't find them. You're lucky if you can see them. And they're, no matter where they are, they're always behind you, you know, popping up out of nowhere. Your first instinct is actually to freeze. Your second instinct is to run. 
somebody had opened up over here with one of these little submachine guns. A third of the guys would freeze and hit the deck. A third of the guys would start running towards him. Bring it dirty! A third of the guys start running off to the side. And it degenerated into basically cowboys and Indians, where everyone's running off by themselves, popping off, you know, popping off blanks. You know, I got you, no, I got you. Fire. We'd finish up and uh, have to die. He'd either come up and tear us a new one or uh, begrudgingly say, ah, oh, well, you did some good things, and yeah, you, you did all right, easy. I think it went fine. I think it went fine. Notice that they cleared the tank. They came off in here. The consolidation was good. The machine gun got up when it needed to. Grenaded the piss out of it. It worked. That's the key to consolidation. Get in here against that counterattack, and lo and behold, it came off, didn't it? Yes, sir. sir. But you were ready for it. You were ready for it. Not bad. That's about as good as it got. We spent one night out in a, in, uh, in a shelter, these bombed out buildings. The problem with that is the buildings are all bombed out. Well, if this is an authentic, I don't know what is. Some of them have no roofs and there's holes in them. And of course we had guard duty that night, so nobody really got a lot of sleep. I shared quarters with Captain Dye and Lieutenant Stokey. Uh, which is nice in that I didn't have to do guard duty, but, you know, I'm also sharing quarters with Captain Dye and Dennis Stokey. It was very, very cold, and uh, Captain Dye says, here, I'll show you an old, here's an old infantry trick. Take your, take those, get those jump gloves there, and you put them on your feet. It keeps your feet warm. I said, you're, you're, you gotta be kidding, right? <laughs> right, is this like, okay. This is what happens when the new guy comes, they, you know, we do the thing, we get the gloves on the feet, and then uh, he has gloves on his feet. So for about half an hour, I was like, okay, you know, thanks, thanks for the tip. About a half an hour later, I put my gloves on my feet, and by God, I was warm all night. <laughs> that was sort of the turning point when everybody kind of crossed the exhaustion line and really started getting tired. What are we at? Day six? Day five? Day six? Oh, man, day 20. Look at Bacani. Let's see. Look at There was one day when they said, uh, okay, everyone's all banged up. We're going to take the afternoon, and everyone's just going to relax and heal up and rest. Order of the day is to relax. Years. Let's get our bodies healed up so we can start doing Where's our jump room? stuff. You understand? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, Sergeant. You're going to square yourselves away if you wish. You can spit shine your little booties if you wish. You can do whatever you want if you right. wish. And it was a trick. They basically got us all with the, with all our gear off and... and uh, and 20 minutes later, they came in screaming, okay, we're moving out, moving out, you know, and everyone had to throw their shit on and go. There was constantly something to do, and uh, if there was nothing else to do, there was polishing your boots. Hour three of boot polishing. You could get the things to, to look all right, but it would take a good 45 minutes, an hour. You get the can and the polish, and you, know, you have to do it with a little dip of water and the time honored spit shine of the thing. Polish and polish and polish and polish and polish. That hour that you had spent polishing your boots turned out eventually to be about the best hour of the day because you were inside, you're sitting still, there's heat, nobody's jumping out of a corner, throwing a grenade at you, and we'd, we'd get to talking and just kind of shooting the shit about the day. Randleman was a. Uh... It was in the Jeep today in Sobel and, uh, yeah, we have a Sobel and Randleman, you know, trying to start the Jeep, the old, you know, beautiful old 1942 Willys Jeep. Randleman's trying to start it up, it's not going to start. He tries again, it's not starting, tries again, it's not starting. He's going on and on and on and on, trying to start the thing. So finally, I take weapons, we all get behind it, push it down the hill and jump start it. Doesn't start. Try again, doesn't start. Follow it all the way down the bottom of the hill, batteries die. We push it all the way back up the top of the hill. Here comes Sarge. Sarge gets in, and with one turn of the key, starts it up and takes off. Boy, it's up front, right? It's right up front. He totally showed us up. So now the joke is, how many, how many Sarges does it take to start an old Jeep? One. 
How many officers? None, because it doesn't matter how many you want, money you have. No officer can do anything right. <laughs> it got to be pretty relaxing. It was kind of nice. They still look like shit. The last three days of our training was called, they called it Jump Week. They came down pretty hard. When they jumped, I guess there was about 150, 200 pounds of gear on. Get used to rigging each other. That's what this is about. Now let's move these buckles here. Ten winners will do that while the rest of you are kind of down the gear. What? Well, let's just say it's pretty tight down there. <laughs> Once you have the gear on, uh, you can't see it. You can't, and, and you can't really turn around. You don't have any room to maneuver. They pack as many guys in those planes as they can. You can't check your own equipment. You have to check the guys in front of you to make sure none of the laces are loose, everything's there. Hand up! Look up! We're, the check! We're not wearing the gear yet. We haven't been given to us. So really, it was just to get us used to doing it by the numbers. basically meant that uh, equipment check was an excuse to like grab the ass of the guy in front of you. <laughs> okay. Try and make him as uncomfortable as possible. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Malfunction. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Time is, you can't judge it in your head. You jump out of a plane, time speeds up, slows down. You don't know what it's gonna do. So you yell 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 because it takes a certain, it takes about four seconds to say that, which is when you want to pull the chute. A big part of their training was to get them not to freeze up at the door. You'd have to go out as fast as you can in a line because they didn't want you to get spread out. The farther spread out you were, the longer it would take to come together and easy it'd be to get lost or to get separated. We worked on that in this little stage in this uh, kind of classroom area, jumping into this blue mat getting chewed out every time we, we did it wrong. Two of you went out the door without your hands on the reserve. Get up there and do it again until you get it right. Go, go, go! Go on, double, go on, double! Go on, go on, go on. Again and again and again, stand up, hook up. Don't sacrifice position coming out. It'll cause you a malfunction. It's easy to do it. How much is it really on the ground? ground. See? Put us a couple thousand feet up in the air, a couple hundred. We'll screw it up. <laughs> Picture day came along. We had about an hour and a half where kind of everything relaxed a little bit. The light's beautiful right now, too. Took some pictures. We've got, hit it! 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000! Outstanding. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Hey, I hear that uh, Leaf God becomes the next Eisenhower. Apparently. <laughs> yeah, that's Apparently. what I heard. Apparently, too. that's what happened. Yeah. Who, Mamie? Huh? Ike or Mamie? One, two, three, first shot! Uh, I'll squat down here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, be best buddies now. You get 10 seconds of my best buddy. <laughs> Everybody's got a Captain Diamante. It's not a hard, you know, easy. Is. Farmer, you communist. <laughs> Richard Spade actually has one that involves a hand puppet. Bull Randleman has probably the best Captain Die that anyone has. I don't want to see any fucking smiles. I rip your fucking heads cool. off and shit down your goddamn neck. <laughs> I'll rip your head off and shit in your shoulders. <laughs> Picture day was the first time he actually dusted it off in front of Captain Dye. Everybody grab a partner. We'll be doing open heart surgery. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I won't find out who that partner is. <laughs> Our final field exercise was basically the idea was we're going to do a maneuver now as a company. So all 40, 50 guys are going to be involved. The squad's going to go over here and defend the bridge, and this one's going to have me with the machine guns and set up a base of fire, and this one's going to come around here, do a double pincher movement. Blah, blah, blah. Here's the basic thing. We're here, crowds here. I bomb the shit out of them. You guys roll in and make a big up to the whole thing. 
Yeah. This one was a big deal, especially for Damien, because he had to run the whole thing and sort of coordinate it. Now you people watching this on HBO don't get to see Nixon do too much stuff. You should have seen this fierce warrior on the battleground the other day. Hopefully we'll get you to do it again. Yeah, yeah. You're a bad man, Nixon! I was acting as the company intelligence officer, and it was, it was my job to go out and do a reconnaissance of the, the terrain. And... Mr. Nixon, could you tell us what we're looking for again, sir? Yeah, we're looking for uh, any uh, indications of enemy activity. You see fresh dirt strewn around, signs of entrenchment, you see spare parts off a tank, anything mechanical. I kind of thought that there probably wouldn't be, you know, a German soldiers out there or minefields. <laughs> Even if you know that you are an actor in the middle of central England, and by God, there's just nothing out there, no one's coming, you hear things and you see things, and there's always like a little army coming over the hill. This might indicate a minefield. Don't step on any of these. Don't, do not step on any of these. Dai's cadre was running around in German uniforms. Now they had German uniforms and submachine guns. We're gone, we're gone, we're gone. Second platoon under Harry Welsh took a left flanking movement, which left flanking movement basically means sneak around on his left. Sit down! Get them up online! Come on! Come on! Weapons platoon set up inside uh, the command post, put a machine gun nest up top. First platoon sort of came at them uh, from the front and put a base of fire. Base of fire basically means that we shoot at you a lot so that you you put your head down as opposed to look for the, the sneaking up left flanking movement. Hold your fire! Hold your fire! Right there, right there, behind the house! We have snipers to our left hand side! I want concentrated bursts of machine gun fire. Do here. not waste your ammo! Go, runner, go! Cover it, cover it! I want him on a 180 all the way around the hole. Two guns here. Get him around the side as well. Okay, we have somebody in here on the left hand side, up our rear. Get in that window, Compton. Get to the window now. See who he is. He's in a black coat. Got him? Got him. Let's move it up. Lipton, you're coming with me. Guns, go! Hit him up! Hit him up! I them search for any documents. Check their pockets. Private, get a, get a weapon on this guy. Good news, Easy Company, you passed your final field. Yeah. And the whole thing came off pretty well, I gotta say. It, uh, not bad for, not bad for a bunch of actors. <laughs> One, two, three, four, 105th Airborne! We're beginning to look like something. It pains me. <laughs> You're beginning to look like something. Our final day of training, the very last day, this is it. This, we're, we're this and we go home. We got tomorrow and then we're out of here, baby. We're going to war. We spent at, uh, at Bryce Norton. It's like the British equivalent of Fort Benning. It's where they teach everyone how to parachute. They wangled the facilities and for us for the day. And the instructors sort of stood back, scratching their heads a little, because of course they're teaching us 1940 techniques <laughs> with 1940 gear. We were really excited about this. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Because they had a lot of good toys at Bryce Norton, and we're not just jumping off of a, a three-foot bench into some sand, which we've been doing for two days. Prepare to land, right land. Oh, no! Bryce Norton, we had ramps, okay? You jump off the end of a ramp, and then you, and you run up the ramp and jump off the end of the ramp, running. What's in store for you today is PLFs off the inclined ramp. Now you're coming up. 
So if you haven't learned PLFs down in the pits, I'm going to suffer today because now we're going to put velocity on you. You're going to run up the ramp and get airborne. And then you swing on this big ring thing and fall off the big ring thing. This is exactly how you're trained at Benning. We're going to put you in parachute harness suspension, lift you, and actually show you how to turn and maneuver the parachute. You had us uh, learning to slip, which means to steer the parachute. We are going to give you commands of turns and moves we want you to make. So get used to hanging in harness for a while. I think it's looking good, Webster. Once again, Webbins platoon is doing excellent work. Let's watch. Any comments about weapons platoon, Lieutenant? They're the big Ben of this company. Always on time, always ready to kick some ass. Nice. Thank you. That was a good day. I think spirits were a little high. Everybody uh, saw the light at the end of the tunnel. There's a lot of standing in line, so, you know, it, it was an opportunity to, uh, basically everybody got to shoot the shit a little bit. Could you jump out of a plane right now? No, I think I need another half guy still. Another half? <laughs> There's Popeye Wynn. He's just joined us. He's our, Do I he's look a, like Popeye? He's our new recruit who has not yet been broken in. That doesn't make any sense. Do you know why? Why? Clearly marked. He's why? a dummy. <laughs> You got two what? Two harnesses all for me, sir. You're gonna need two, you fat fuck. <laughs> now hit it. Don't laugh at me. Hit it. <laughs> One thousand, two thousand. One thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand. One thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand. Recover. <clears throat> and there is the tower. Shum, 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 shum. Shum, 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 shum. The Tower of Destiny awaits us. When the original guys did this, all their training led up to their jumps. They did five of them. At the end of the fifth jump, they were paratroopers. And they got the wings pinned on, and uh, that was it. They'd made it. It was a huge deal to them. It was, a, it was an enormous deal. And it was, a, it was a big deal to us because they'd structured it a lot in the same way. For us, it was jumping out of the 40-foot tower at Bryce Norton. There'd been a build-up to that the whole time. And uh, the thing's actually a, a lot scarier, I think, than, than, it, than it looks. think twice about it and it always made me think of uh, my mom you know saying well you know if, if they told you to jump off of a cliff would you and I think if Captain Ty <laughs> told me to jump off a cliff I probably would everyone shout hooray, hooray! when the original guys uh, got the wings pinned on I can't even begin to imagine what, what a, a, a big deal it must have been to these guys after everything that they went through. For them, it was a huge mark of distinction. This was a whole new thing in the, in the history of war, the idea that soldiers are going to jump out of planes and 
land behind enemy lines. They were doing something completely new and innovative, and, uh, and they knew it. I think that that must have been one of the proudest moments of their lives. For us, it was uh, a proportional fraction of that. There was a sense of relief of, okay, you know what, we made it. We're, we're, uh, we're through. <laughs> we did it. We ain't come a long way, easy company. Just to get to this moment. It's probably means as much to you as it means to me. So a lot of courage today, I saw a lot of skill today, I saw a lot of dedication and determination today. That's what makes the Air Force soldier. As such, it's my proud privilege today and silver wings on your chest. Lieutenant Sobel, Airborne, sir. We're raiders of the night. We're dirty sons of bitches. We rather fuck than fight. We drink a bottle of whiskey. We drink a bottle of gin. We take them to the shitter and throw the bastards in. So hiding, 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 hiding. Who the fuck are we? Sins and goddamn everyone infantry. We do a stand down every night, which was. Uh, about an hour after dinner where they, he would kept that would just talk, sort of talk about what we'd done that day. And it was toward the end when he gave us a sort of a big pep talk about what we were doing. You are embarked on a monumental mission, a mission unlike anything that's been undertaken for television in recent history. Are we ready to do this? Can we handle a project like this? Can this unit pull it? I think it can. I think it can. You have earned where you are. You won't believe the team. That was some rock and roll character for motherfuckers stand out. That's the unit. That's the unit. You're there. That's what you work so hard to build. That's what's going to make this sing, or make it sink. You can't believe the phone calls I get. Uh, Captain, we understand that three of them died today. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking awesome. Your familiarity with each other. The way you work together with each other without even thinking about it, it just happens. I'm seeing it every day, more and more. Don't you think that's going to be on film? Don't you think what you do naturally right now, which is the right thing, is going to come across on film? Truth is in you. And the truth will come out of you. Through your eyes, through your actions, through your gestures, through your handling of weapons, through your wearing of the uniform, everything. The truth is there. Let it shine, boys. Let it shine. Make the world proud of easy coming. And the world will celebrate our forefathers, the people who pull this year. We've got that chance, folks. I consider that an honor. Consider it an honor to be here and have the opportunity to salute those gents. And you're my good right hand when it comes to salute. It's got to be done, but it's going to take all of your courage, it's going to take all of your tenacity, it's going to take all of your focus and all of your concentration, and it's going to take it for a long time. You all hit walls out here, didn't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You hit physical walls, you hit psychological walls, you hit emotional walls, and I told you you were going to. Well, here's the neat thing. Broke through every fucking one of them. You're in a place now where you're more capable as a human being, as an actor, as a soldier. Don't blow it. Do the right thing. What you've earned what you paid for is the right to call yourself income. That, gents, is a high honor. 
Let's not fuck that up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We did, sir. We did, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta learn to watch you, Mr. Nixon. <laughs>